So I'd like to answer the question, why is it that we need to be baptised? And the simple answer is that it's a commandment given to us in the Bible by the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus had died and risen again, he went up into the region of Galilee where he'd done a lot of his preaching and many of his disciples were from. And he said to his disciples that they needed to go out into all the world preach the gospel and teach people to believe and be baptized. So I'm just going to Mark chapter 16, which is right at the end of this, the last chapter of the gospel of Mark, where we read in verse 15 that Jesus said to them, that is the disciples, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every person. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not, shall be condemned. So ultimately, there's a very simple expectation around our call to the gospel. And that is that we've got to believe and be baptized. Now, just unpicking that ever so slightly, belief is required. And therefore, as Christadelphians and uh, any real Bible students, it would be impossible to recognize an infant being christened as baptism because a small baby is unable to believe something he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be condemned so so it requires someone who is old enough to be able to make a decision about what they believe in for them to be baptized. And so I suppose the next question that we might want to ask is, well, what is it that we need to believe? What is it that the Lord Jesus calls on us to believe? Well, right at the beginning, let's stick in the Gospel of Mark, of Jesus' ministry, we read of what he asked people to believe. So Mark chapter 1, we read in verse 14, that Jesus came into Galilee. So this is the region that he went to um, following his death that we saw at the end of the gospel to speak to the disciples. He came into Galilee, northern Israel that is, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. And so, that's what we're asked to believe. We're asked to believe in the gospel. And the gospel simply means the good news. That is the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. That's what we're asked to believe in. And we, we might have noticed also it says repent. And so in believing the gospel message, what we're saying is we recognize there's something wrong with us. We've got to repent from something. We recognize that deep in us is a problem, that we continually make mistakes. We're, we're, we're prone to sin. We, 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 we uh, despite our best efforts, too often fall short and, and sin. And what baptism is allowing us to do is to recognize that actually we're sinners, that sin is worthy of nothing more than death, and yet we're asking for God's forgiveness. And so we repent from our sin. We believe in the hope of the gospel. That is that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he was sent to deal with the problem of sin. And we believe in the hope that one day God is going to completely deal with sin. The Lord Jesus Christ is by setting up a kingdom here on earth which everyone that's prepared to humble themselves and believe and be baptized and then try to follow the example of the Lord Jesus Christ is able to be a part of. So an example of this in the scriptures is in the book of Acts. Now, you've got the Gospels, haven't you? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And then straight after the Gospels, after the Lord Jesus Christ had beamed up to Galilee and told them to go into all the world and to preach and to tell people to believe and be baptized, the next book is the book of Acts, which 
described for us the work of the disciples and the apostles as they went out from Jerusalem and Israel out into the Roman world to preach the gospel message. So come with me to Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, we see an apostle called Philip, and he is sent to go to an Ethiopian man who has been to Jerusalem, and he's traveling back to Ethiopia. And on his way back, he's reading the Isaiah scroll. So, you know, we've got to take our hat off to him. Here he is in a chariot, and, and uh, you know, clearly at intervals, perhaps at rest, he's opening up this scroll and he's reading away. And, and, and he's reading from a place in Isaiah, uh, an Old Testament book, where he can see something of the Lord Jesus Christ, who no doubt he's heard about, or perhaps even seen, but likely heard about when in Jerusalem. So in Acts chapter 8, we read in verse 32, that the place of the scripture where he was reading was this, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And so that section was a prophecy written 700 years before the Ethiopian eunuch is reading it about the Lord Jesus Christ, whose life was literally taken from the earth. And yet he was like a sheep to the slaughter or a lamb. He didn't fight or argue because he knew that he was going to be the means that God was going to show the whole world the problem of sin, that even an altogether lovely, innocent man, people would crucify and put to death. That's how bad sin is. That's how badly it needs dealing with. And so as the Ethiopian eunuch reads this passage, he can see that actually that man is the man he's heard about in Jerusalem. The character of the Lord Jesus he's heard about. And so he believes. And so when Philip comes to him in the desert, Philip is able to explain to him exactly what that passage is saying about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so verse 35, Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached to him Jesus. And as they came on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? So the eunuchs got to this point in understanding where he can recognize the importance of Jesus in taking away his sin. No doubt he understands something of the hope of the resurrection because he knows that that man, Jesus, whose life was taken from the earth, rose again. Because that's what everyone in Jerusalem has been talking about. So... They went on their way and they came to a certain water and the eunuch said, behold, here is water. What hinders me to be baptized? And Philip said, if you believe, note again, this is an adult. This is someone who's able to believe. If you believe with all your heart, you can, you may be baptized. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So where do you know they went? They went into the water. It wasn't possible for Philip to say, listen, get one of the servants uh, to just Go out and, you know, go and get us a, um, a bottle of water, if you like. And I'll tell you what, I'll pop it on your head. And as so long as you say these words, then don't worry, that's OK. No, 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 no. They both went into the water. Now, I'm going to show you, if I may, a, um, a video of um, me baptizing my daughter. And this was... Um, a couple of years ago during the first pandemic lockdown. And so ordinarily, we would probably baptize someone in our uh, meeting or, or our church, our, our ecclesia, in uh, the, a, a sort of bath 
in the hall. And that that's that's you know pretty normal in, in, in lots of different places. But because of the pandemic, we weren't able to go to the hall. And so we are very fortunate, we live close to the beach, and so we went down to the beach and we were able to baptize Lily. So let me share this and just let's note what she's asked and uh, what happens when Lily is baptized. So let's just share my screen. Do you believe the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, I do. Well, on this public confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit for the remission of your sins. So you can see it's just a short video, isn't it? Um, just a short video that, that demonstrates straight to us what baptism actually is. And that is that like the Ethiopian eunuch and like thousands of others through the Gospels, Lily had to be fully immersed in the water. She had to go right down into the water to demonstrate her belief that she needs to repent, that actually she, like all of us, is full of sin. And as it were, she needs to have her sins washed away. We're, we're in Acts. Just, just come on to Acts chapter 22, where the Apostle Paul recounts what Jesus asked him to do when he first accepted belief in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the hope of the kingdom. And so he, he says in Acts chapter 22 and verse 16 that he was told, and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And so the concept of baptism, isn't it, is that actually we recognize that we're full of sin and that our sin needs to be washed away. Now, clearly, that's not a literal thing. It's not that when I took Lily into the water, we were able to look and see her sins floating down downstream, as it were. Of course it's not. It's a symbolic representation, isn't it, that actually our sins need to be dealt with. Now, just think. If. If we didn't do that if we didn't recognize the importance of our sins being washed away then what what's the point in accepting the lord jesus christ there's no point simply believing in jesus and the hope of the kingdom if we don't recognize that the reason jesus was sent was to deal with our sins. Just come to one more passage. Come with me to Romans chapter six. So you're in Acts. The next book is Romans. And I want you to come with me to Romans chapter six. And right at the end of Romans six, we read in verse 23 that the wages of sin is death. And so sin is, as it were, being personified, isn't it? We're being told the wages of sin, what sin is worthy of, is nothing but death. And so, listen, that's certain in everyone's lives, isn't it? Death. But what the gospel offers, what God in his loving kindness has given us, is a way out of death. We all know we die. These days, we're not very good at accepting that we sin. But the reality is, we know we die. We know from the Bible that it's sin that tragically leads us to death. And so we're all going to die. But what God has said is, if you're prepared to accept, humble yourself and recognize that I've dealt with sin by giving my only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to show you how bad the problem of sin is and if you'll believe that and after belief show your belief by baptism 
that I will allow you ultimately to live forever. And so in Romans chapter six, just come with me to verse four at the beginning of the chapter. Therefore, it says, we're buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we should also in the likeness of his resurrection. So what does that mean? Why is that language of death and resurrection being used in association with baptism? Well, what would happen if I'd left Lily under the water, if I'd kept her under the water? She'd die. And so by being fully immersed in the water, we're demonstrating the wages of sin is death. If you stayed under that water before long, you'd be dead. But we don't keep anyone under the water, of course, because the whole point of baptism is that like as Christ was raised from the dead, verse 4, so also we should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. And so if we die before the hope of the kingdom of God is sent back to the earth, we don't need to worry because we'll be raised from the dead because we were amongst those who accepted, yes, I'm sinful. I make mistakes. I mess up every day. I recognize that the wages of sin is death. And so I repent. And I believe that the solution to this is in the gospel message. It's in the word of God, the gospel message. I believe that. I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that he is the son of God sent to deal with the problem of sin. And I believe that one day he's going to come back to the earth and establish a kingdom. That because I was amongst those who had the humility to recognize that I deserve nothing more than death. And I showed that in my baptism. I will be amongst those who will share in the likeness of his resurrection and will walk in newness of life, never to die, to live forever. That's a pretty amazing hope, isn't it? Surely it's worth the humility of baptism.